Hey, what's going on everybody? Today we're going to dive back into the Altima. We're going to be doing front and rear brakes and rotors. We already got the car in the air. You can check out my how to jack the car up for this channel. I'm going to get it on jack stands all the way around. So we got the wheels off, jack stands, whole car's in the air. We are going to be starting with the front. We're going to go ahead and get the caliper off and then we're going to get the caliper bracket off which will allow us access to get the rotor off so we're going to go ahead and get into this now and i'll show you guys everything you need in order to get each one of these components off all right guys so we're going to start by getting the caliper off um i could use an impact i do have my new the wall impact here that i could probably get these caliper bolts out with no effort at all but i'm gonna go ahead and do it the old manual way i've always done it that way so we're going to go ahead and use a 14 mil and we're going to get this caliper bolt right off. Should be pretty easy to break loose. Yep, no effort at all. And once you crack these loose with a wrench, I mean, an impact is even a little bit much for these. You can just barely move it and they come right out. Now, in the past when I've done these brakes, I have used anti-seize. So that does help make these come out way easier. I would recommend doing that on every, uh, you know, time you service your brakes. And we'll be doing this in this job as well. But helps make this an easy job anytime you go to do it in the future we'll get the lower one out remember this is a 14 mil bolt all right that one's loose not much effort at all back this out bang got that one out didn't even need our ratcheting 14 and from here we can go ahead and slide our caliper off. And what I'm going to do is hang the caliper right here on our strut tower, right where the spring is. And that'll keep it out of harm's way. It's safe there. We won't be putting pressure on the brake hose from it hanging or, you know, being in a strenuous position. So it's out of the way. We can work from here. It's pretty simple. Get the brake pads off. They just pop right out. These don't look too bad. Um, the other side is really getting a lot of noise and brake dust. So I'm curious to see what the passenger side is going to look like. We're on the driver right now, but that is the first one. There is the second one. This one's about even wear with that one. So this doesn't look too bad. Um, nothing crazy as far as wear is concerned. We got about the same wear on both of them so that's good um, from there what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and get into taking off this actual caliper bracket so to take off our front caliper bracket we need to get these two big 22 millimeter bolts out this one and this one that'll allow this caliper bracket to free up and it's going to drop right off the actual knuckle assembly and give us access to pull the rotor out now in the past i've always done this manually um it's not bad i mean you take a, a breaker bar or a one half drive socket wrench that's pretty strong with a you know one half drive socket and you can knock these off pretty easily but i'm going to go ahead and try to use my new impact here and we're going to see if we can get this done with the impact quickly and efficiently so the only thing i need to do to get access with my impact is get this plastic splash guard out because that is kind of blocking our way so all you need if you decide to do this with an impact it's a pry bar and you can literally pop that was a fail it's kind of hard to do this one-handed but there you go just pop these clips right off it's real easy and then from there we should have access to drop this down and we should be able to squeeze the impact right inside of here all right guys we've got that splash guard off it was very simple just put it underneath the car to the side with all the clips so we don't lose anything we regularly do oil changes on this car it is the exact same thing as the splash guard that covers the oil filter so you know it's got the four clips holding it in on the side here and then it's got the one underneath holding it into the actual uh, subframe right there so joke to get off now she give us access to go ahead and shoot our 22 millimeter bolts out with an impact all 
Alright guys, so now that we got our splash shield off and to the side, we should be able to shoot these bolts off with no problem with the impact. I had a little adapter on here, so I took it off to hopefully fit in here, and yeah, it's a perfect fit. Let's see if we can get this out of here. This one's going to be a little bit harder than the other one. Yep, no problem. That thing came right out of there. In fact, I'm even going to put it back in here to get this impact off of here. Yep. And look how easy this is coming out. It's because it's got any seized from the past. Should come right out no no effort that's a joke all right guys so let's go ahead and get this uh, top one off now so we got the splash shield also should be a joke to get out of here so let's... Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> almost lost my life there guys got that thing out of there though so what we're gonna do now you can tell i'm new at using the impact huh i'm used to the old school break your muscle way using a breaker bar this is almost too easy but um yeah we knocked that thing right out of there so let's um put this to the side now and now from here look our rotors are already sliding off now sometimes you might have to do this with a little more effort than what we're doing here but um I'm gonna go ahead and slide this thing off. Came right off. Sometimes rotors here have little screw holes in them where you can put a threaded screw in there to press it off of the hub. This one uh, didn't have the threaded holes, but we got that right off of there. So now we can go ahead and reassemble this with our new parts. All right, guys, so here is our new parts. We got everything from the hardware to the pads to the rotors. Now this is all power stop from Rock Auto. That's where I got it. It's nothing crazy. Um, power stop does have some, some really good other options, slotted and drilled and everything. These are the evolution pads. They come with them from power stop. This is just like a good OE replacement. Uh, nothing, you know, performance. This is a grocery getting four door sedan Ultima, so you know. I modified once before, so I guess I can't hate too much, but <laughs> we are going to just put some regular replacement stuff on here. Nothing crazy. These are just some really good quality uh, replacements. I've had experience with them, with them in the past. Um, I have put these on other people's vehicles, and um, everybody always has good things to say about them. Uh, not any brake dust, anything like that, so we should be good with doing these on here. And um, Let's go ahead and throw these on, and we'll start getting these back onto the front. All right, guys, so we're going to go ahead and get into the reassembly of this. Um, first thing we're going to do is take our caliper bracket, and we're going to give it a little bath real quick with some brake cleaner. So I'm going to throw it on top of here on this old rotor. A little makeshift table. I'm going to hit it with a little bit of brake cleaner. Some of that crap off there. Go ahead and go ahead and let that dry. Now what we need to do we move forward is retract the caliper so what that means is the piston and the caliper needs to be retracted in order for us to get these new pads on when you buy new pads they're obviously not the same thickness as the old ones the old ones are worn down and you actually got to retract the piston back into the caliper in order to have the space for the actual pads the new pads to fit so what we're going to do is let that dry for a second and then we're actually going to throw that back on without the rotor, throw the caliper back on, and then we're going to go ahead and retract that piston. So I'm going to go ahead and reassemble this now without the rotor, show you how it looks, and then we're going to go ahead and retract that piston. All right, guys, so we have this all reassembled. Um, so essentially, this is just reassembled without the rotor, and I have one brake pad in there. So this is to give us leverage up against the actual caliper piston when we use our C-clamp here. So... What we're going to do is take a C clamp and this is going to go over the caliper. This then is going to go onto the pad and it's going to slowly press the actual pad onto the piston to retract that piston back into the caliper. So let's go ahead and get this C clamp mounted and I'll show you guys how we're going to retract this piston. All right, guys, so this is what it should look like. The one end of the C clamp should be right there mounted on the edge of the brake caliper brake hose. 
bolt. Then you want to get the other one right up against that brake pad. Get as centered as possible. And I'm going to go ahead and retract this. I would try to record it, but i got to hold on to this for some stability. But literally all you do is hold the C-clamp, and then we're just going to turn this as if it were tightening a bolt. And it's going to press that actual caliper piston right back in there. So let's go ahead and retract this caliper piston. All right, guys, so I just got that press in there. Should be about as tight as it can get. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this caliper back off, and then we're going to see where we're at as far as the piston. All right, guys, so we just got that front caliper off. I'm going to rest it right here for a minute. And if you can see, we got that piston retracted pretty good in there. So it's just about flush with the actual piston, which is fine. Press it to about as hard as it can go. You don't want to get too crazy with it, but that should be enough leverage for us to slide these new pads in here and get enough space to fit. So now what we're going to do is go ahead and take the caliper bracket back off. We're going to slide the rotor on and then reassemble everything. All right, guys, so here is our new rotor. I actually took brake cleaner and sprayed this off and let it dry up real quick. Definitely recommend always spraying rotors before you put them on just to get anything that's on them from the manufacturer. Sometimes they even put like a grease on them uh, to keep them like from rusting or, you know, things like that. Like at AutoZone, for example, the Duralast ones come with that. But um, always just take a little bit of brake cleaner, shoot it on there. Um, I'm going to throw these onto the hub real quick. I mean, this is extremely straightforward. We slide it on just like the wheel. See it line right up over our lug nuts. All right, slide that back on there. And what I like to do, especially when you're reassembling the brake, you want to take a lug nut and just tighten it on, keep that rotor in place in the spot. So that way, when you're reassembling everything, you don't have to worry about it moving or flexing or anything like that all right guys so now that we got our rotor back on it's secured we got it tightened on there with our lug nut our next move is to get the caliper bracket on here so before i do that i do want to address these bolts like i said when i was taking them off i prior i and i any seized them when i did this job before just to make them easily accessible so they come out you know with no issues so they don't rust um and we are going to do that again so we you know when we do this in the future it'll be easy to take them out so before I go ahead and reassemble the caliper or the caliper bracket or put any of these bolts back in here, what we're going to do is go ahead and clean these off. I'm just going to wipe off the old anti-seize with a paper towel. And then from there, I'm going to put a little bit of anti-seize on them. And then we can go ahead and start reassembling everything. Okay, guys. So we do have our anti-seize here. This is just a cheap little pack that you can get for like a dollar from AutoZone. It's nothing fancy, nothing special. All you got to do is take the littlest bit on your finger and just put it on the threads. And it's kind of hard to do one-handed, as I'm sure you can imagine. But really, I'm just taking this, and I'm going to turn the bolt. And just try to get it spread across the threads without using too much. I'm not trying to make it all goopy or, you know, sloppy. You just want a little bit to cover the threads enough so it has a little sealant essentially right across the threads. So that's all we're going to do with all four of these bolts. Just go ahead and get a little bit of anti-seize on the threads. And then from there, we can go ahead and reassemble everything. All right, guys. So we got the caliper bracket slid back on. Started putting one bolt in there. We're going to go ahead and put the other mounting bolt on here. And essentially what we're going to do is assemble everything and just finger tight it for now because we are going to be torque uh, wrenching these bolts back in there. So we are going to torque everything to spec to ensure it's correct. So right now I'm just going to finger tight these bracket bolts right back in. All right, so the caliper bracket is now finger tight secured. We got our bolts tighten in there by fingers so the bracket's pretty good it'll be fine until we go to torque it now from here like i said before you want to make sure you have play in your caliper pins because this is a huge factor in your braking and it actually functioning how it's supposed to so you need to make sure that they have play and then from here what we're going to do is go ahead and put our brake pads into the caliper bracket all right guys so i actually had the new hardware installed on here but it actually isn't made quite right. This edge right here is coming in contact with the rotor. Right there. 
so I don't know if you can see where the old hardware it's not touching but it was touching with the, the new stuff so I actually just put the old hardware back on there which is fine I mean it's not compromised it's just dirty from being old but this is the OE hardware and it does fit like a glove so I think we're just going to reuse this instead of using that new stuff because even though it's new if it doesn't fit right it's not going to help us and it's going to create more problems than good so we're going to go ahead and reuse these um, and now the next step is just putting the pads in um, but before we do that what I always recommend is use some grease and we're going to grease up the caliper pins and grease up the pads themselves in order for them to have good friction and uh, just a clean install to make sure everything's you know soundproof then we can try to avoid to get as much noise as possible because nobody likes squeaky brakes so um, what we're going to do now is just use this power stop coating that we got it's actually the uh, lubricant that came with it I have some that I always use but we know since this came with it we're going to go ahead and use it and uh, we'll do that now we're going to put a little bit here on each caliper hardware and then from there we're going to put it on the pads themselves where it's contacting with the caliper. So let's go ahead and put that lubricant on these pads and hardware now. All right, guys. So we just need to take the littlest bit. I just have a little bit on my finger. Press it in to where it's contacting with the pad right there. So I'm just trying to rub it in, try to avoid getting it on the rotor. So it's all inside on the hardware on this clip and on here where it makes contact with the pad. And I just gotta do this on every other corner. And then we should be good as far as lubricating our hardware. All right, guys, so we got the pads clicked in here. Um, it's just the same as popping them out, you know, it's just a reversal of removal. And I know every car guy hates hearing, hearing that, but uh, it's the truth. I mean, they just click right back in there. Um, so the next thing we're gonna do is uh, put the grease on the actual brakes for where the caliper is making contact. So we're going to get a little bit of our power stop lubricant right here. And you kind of just want to put it where the caliper is going to make contact, which would be the front right here. You don't have to drench the whole thing here. We're just essentially putting it where it makes contact. And then the back, we're going to make a big circle on the pad. Might be kind of hard to tell here. It's like pretty random, but we're going to make a huge circle right here. And that's just for where the piston itself is going to make contact. So I wanted to grease up that pad or both of the pads. And the next thing we can do is go ahead and slide this caliper right back over. All right, guys. So here is our caliper. If you remember, we retracted the piston. So I'm going to attempt to do this one-handed. But this thing should just slide right over like water. And it sure did. It's right over. I just got to get this last caliper pin pressed in. There we go. So you just want to make sure it slides right over the caliper pins. Uh, slides right over the pads. You can see we got the grease making contact. Sorry for the crappy camera. I mean, I'm trying to do this one handed. I need a GoPro in my life. But uh, this right here is exactly where we want to be at. So we got the caliper slid right over. And then from here, what we're going to do this finger tight our caliper bolts right back in and then we're going to make sure everything's finger tight and then from there we can go ahead and torque our bolts back to spec all right guys caliper is on everything is reassembled greased up cleaned up looks pretty good so the next thing we want to do is go ahead and torque our caliper bracket bolts right here we're going to do those first um, these are 107 foot pounds so you want to set torque wrench to 107 that's what we got and we're just going to go ahead and torque these bolts right in there all right guys so remember it is a 22 mil socket and it is 107 foot pounds so let's have, get this thing clicked in here Sure both of these are yep, clicked in there so now we're going to go ahead and move to the caliper bolts all right guys so 
Next move is we just have to torque the caliper pin bolts. They are 20 foot pounds, so we got our torque wrench set here to 20 foot pounds, and this should be pretty simple. We're just gonna go ahead and get this thing in here. Probably we're already close to it, even from finger tight. But let's see where we're at here. Good. Go ahead and get on the second one. This one will be way easier because I don't have to deal with the splash guard or the bumper. I can get the socket. There you go. Alright, that's at 20. Let's just recheck this one, make sure it's still good. Yep. Alright, guys, we are locked in. See, our caliper has play. Greased up, clean, rotor's good, should be fine, no noise. Only thing I have to do now is put that splash guard right here back in with the four clips on the top and then one on the bottom and then our front driver's done. All right guys, so we are on to the rear. Got the other side done. We started on the front driver. Got the front passenger done. The same thing i mean there's no difference between the size even the splash guards the same if you want to do like i did and use an impact and take that off to give you some give yourself some room but you know, we got that one done it's all to the rear so what we're going to do is go ahead and break everything apart like we did last time for the front now the thing is is i'm not going to be able to use an impact on this as much as i would like to use my new impact and you know shoot these bolts off it's not really possible with our uh, rear arm right here so we're just going to manually get these out you know these are 19 mils so it shouldn't be too crazy uh, but we're going to go ahead and start with our caliper bolts here and this is the same as the front they are 14 mils and that is how we broke them loose in the front was manually with this 14 mil wrench and yeah, there we go that was pretty easy crack the right loose go ahead and get this bottom one all right so we're going to go ahead and get these caliper bolts out and get the caliper off and then from there we're going to go ahead and move on to the caliper bracket bolts from there all right so we went ahead and we got our caliper bolts out now they're actually sliding pins with the bolts so keep in mind they will come out as the whole pin so now from here we should be able to free up this caliper yep and got our caliper freed up here. All right, so we're gonna do the same thing as the front. We're gonna put this to the side. From here, I think we can go ahead and put it right over our arm here and rest it firmly. And it's not really hanging. It's not putting any pressure on the uh, line. It should be out of the way and we should be fine. Um, and then from here, we'll pop our pads right out. Rear pads look way better than the front. Could use a replacement but they're not bad you can probably get some more life out of these but you know we're doing the front we're going to do it all but you know the rear usually doesn't wear as much as the front anyway of course but this one actually looks a little bit worse than the other one so got those out of there okay so now from here what we're going to go ahead and do is go ahead and break these 19 mil bolts loose to get the bracket off all right guys so i actually got these 19 mils out very easily Keep in mind, I did any CZs on the last job, so that will help. And this made it a lot easier for me. Um, all I did was use a half drive on the bottom. So I actually had the room for it, so I'm gonna use a half drive ratchet. Got that one out, okay. And then for the top, I just used a 19 mil wrench. So you can get your 19 mil wrench. Just slide right in there and you can get that thing right out. Okay guys, bracket is off, so what we're going to do is walk it over here to our cleaning station. Let's go ahead and put this down. Now I'm just going to give it a few sprays and brake cleaner. Try to get it cleaned up a bit. Alright, shake it off of here. We're going to let that dry for a moment. Alright guys, so while that's drying, we're going to go ahead and knock this rotor off. Sometimes if you're lucky, you can pull it right off. It's going to come right off just like that just like the front did um we're just going to have to help it on a little bit so um got a hammer what you want to do is just hit in between each lug nut what we're just going to do is break the rust down behind this which is kind of 
connecting it to the hub in a sense. We're going to free that up and it should give us some play to get this off. So let's go ahead and start hitting it here. You see all that rust? This is all rust holding that on there. So this is why it won't come off. Still on there, so it needs a little bit more love here. pretty good. I had to do this for the other front one. Alright guys, so we got a lot of hammering going on here, but it's still on here pretty good, so I'm going to see if I can persuade it with some heat. We got a torch here, so see if we can't get it off. I really think what's holding it on is this edge onto the hub. It looks just rusted solid. So I believe everything behind it, we probably got off, you know, hitting it. But I think what it's really being held on by is this right here. So let's see if we can get it with some heat. What I'm gonna do is just torch it for a little bit. And then from there, let's see if we can get this hammer going. crazy if you do have a torch to be able to just go around it lightly heat it up you see it changing as I go around definitely doing some work Keep in mind, like I said, you don't want to get this too hot, so. Gonna cut that out. Let's see where we're at. Oh, there it is, guys. <laughs> it was that. I saw that first break, it came right from around here, so what was holding this piece of crap on here was this right here, and that's why we torched her up, so we got her off, there we go guys, alright guys, so now that we got that rotor off, our next move is going to be getting this piston retracted. So uh, just like the front, you know, we got to retract the piston so we can fit our new pads. Our new pads are not going to fit on here so with this set up the way it is. So let me turn that around for a second here. See if we can get it. There we go. We got to sit it on here. Now, what I'm going to do for the back is a little bit different than the front. I have this pad separator right here. This works different than the C-clamp, although it's the same principle, kind of what we did with the brake pad and the C-clamp is going to, you know, resemble what this is doing. So we're just going to drop it into the caliper. Now this thing right here is mainly for rear calipers. Um, we probably won't have enough room or anything for fronts with this tool, but what we're going to do is set this up, get it going, press right into the caliper piston with that uh, end and then this right here, which is going to give us enough um, pressure right off the back of the caliper to press that piston right into the actual caliper. All right, guys, so this is working great. Just turn it in on in and it's slowly retracting, giving us that space we need so we can fit these new pads in here. You know, I don't want to go too crazy with this either, so I went pretty far. We'll go ahead and uh, back this out. And we got a piston here retracted and we should be good. All right guys, so as you can see, our piston is retracted. It's nice and clean. It's pretty flush with the caliper, but that should be more than enough than we need to get space for these new pads. So from here, we can go ahead and start the reassembly process and we're gonna go ahead and start with the new rotor. All right guys, so what you wanna do, just like before, is break clean the rotor real nice, clean it up. Um, even though it looks a little bit dirty, it is clean for me. Break clean and all the grease running off. What we wanna do it now is get this little rubber gasket out of the rotor. 
Um, anytime you switch them, you probably just want to have to pop this out and uh, put it into the new rotor. So let's go ahead and get this out. If I remember from the last time, yep, I'll just pop it down with a wrench ahead. So she came right out. All I did is took it and pressed it in with the wrench into that little hole and it just pushes it right through. So now, if you look at the new rotor, it does have a spot for this little gasket here. And you can just press it right back in. Bang. It's on. Flush in the back. Never know. Got our gasket in there. Now, let's go ahead and slide the rotor on. And we're going to do the same thing as the front. We're going to lock this in with a lug nut so when we go to reinstall everything, you know, the rotor's holding tight, no flex, no play. Keep that in there real nice and tight. There we go, rotor's in there. So from here, all we really need to do is clean up our um, bolts. And um, from there, we can go ahead and reassemble everything. All right, guys, so what we're gonna do, clean up our four bolts here for reassembly. Um, the two caliper bolts, which actually have the pins on them as well, we're gonna do a little something different than the front because obviously the pins weren't part of the actual bolt in the front. So we're gonna wipe these down real nice. Clean them off till they're about dry. All I'm doing is taking a paper towel and wiping them off. Now I also anti-seized these when I did this last. So we're gonna wipe that anti-seize off the top of them as well. Okay. Now what we're gonna do here is actually apply some caliper loop so what that is is ultra disc caliper loop what this does is put a little bit of grease on here to allow this to freely slide in our bracket so you don't have to go crazy with this i'm just opening it up and i'm going to put the littlest bit it has a brush you can literally just touch it take your finger and get it all around it and it would be more than enough to lubricate this up. So once you got it completely covered, you should be fine. You've got a nice layer across the entire sliding portion. And then from there, I'm just going to take a little bit of anti-seize. And I'm going to put it right on the threaded portion of this. So my threads are going to have a nice little bit of anti-seize. And now this pin is completely prepared to be slid right back into the caliper bracket. All right, guys, so we are ready for reassembly. We got our caliper pin bolts all, you know, greased up, anti-seized, caliper bracket bolts anti-seized. We have our caliper bracket brake clean, so this is all cleaned up nice. Um, I'm actually gonna reuse the OEM hardware again since the fronts obviously, um, you know, weren't great. They didn't, you know, weren't a perfect fit. And I stuck with the OEMs in the front. I'm just going to do the same in the back. So these are cleaned out pretty good. Um, we're going to go ahead and reattach this. And then from there, we'll go ahead and uh, grease everything up for reassembly. So we can go ahead and take our bracket here. And slide it right back over the rotor. And we are going to take our 19 mil bolts here. And we're going to do the same thing that we did in the front. So we're going to just finger tight these in here both of them as tight as you can go so it's secure and then after we finger you know tightened everything in and the whole reassembly is complete we'll go ahead and go back and torque everything so let's go ahead and get this assembled here now and then from there we can move on to the next step all right guys so we do have caliper hardware Greased up as you can see. So now we're just going to go ahead and snap our pads back in there. So we've got our new pads. Keep in mind you want the one with the wear sensor on the rear. So this one's going in the rear. The one without the sensor is going in the front. So these are way easier in the front. They just snap in. So we're just going to slide both of these in. I have to get in here to see where I'm at. Bang. All right, so we got both of these in here, greased up on each connecting point to the hardware. So we got that nice power stop 
ceramic coating for this. So let's go ahead and uh, now we're going to go ahead and put it on the pad itself where it's going to make contact with the caliper. And then we're going to make a nice circle on the back for where the piston meets the pad. Just like we did in the front. Just want to get a little bit of um, see one here. We're going to go ahead and uh, just get it all over that back for the circle. And there we have it, guys. This is all greased up nice. Okay. So pads are greased, hardware is greased. Everything is greased. All right, guys. So once we have our pads and everything, we should be able to slide our caliper right back over. Just like this. Just be careful of your rubber grommets here. And then from there, we're going to go ahead and try to slide our pins back. So we're going to grab the one that has no rubber grommet for the top. Alright, we got that one slid in. Let's start it up. Alright, got that one threaded in. Now, it's having a little bit of trouble with this one because the rubber on the grommet on the pin is getting bad. Let's see if we can push it in here. Yeah, I got that one in there, so I'm going to go ahead and tighten these up, and then should be good. All right, guys, so got everything finger tight in here. This is moving nice. I got play where a pin is. You can see it moving or hear it. There we go. Everything is reassembled. Now all we have to do is torque our bolts. All right, guys, so what we're going to do is torque our 19 mil bolts that are the caliper bracket bolts. Um, I don't think I'm going to be able to get to this one with a torque wrench, although I'm going to try. Um, but it is 62 pounds, 62 foot pounds. So we're right there, set of 62. And we're going to go ahead and torque these bolts in here. So I should be able to get to this bottom one. We'll see what happens at the top. Okay, got that one locked in. Locked in. So this is all torque to spec. Aside from that top caliper bolt where we had to use a wrench, but you know, we're good. This is nice and tight. Everything's greased up, clean. And we are set, guys. So I hope this helped with um, doing your front and rear brakes um rotors you know i would recommend doing them if they're worn down um my fronts on this were pretty bad on um, the rear not so much but when you start getting deep grooving and lines in your rotors and stuff like that it's about time for them to go so you know we went ahead and did new uh pads rotors all the way around greased everything up anti seize and torque everything to spec so we should be good um and like i said i hope this helps and Follow me for more content, especially on this Ultima. So have a good one, guys.